Hi everyone, and how are you all doing? I really hope you're managing to find some good things to do. After all, the football's on, Wimbledon starts up this week, and soon the Olympics will be upon us. So, summer is well and truly here. And I really, really hope that you all manage to secure some time for a holiday break, whether that's at home or near home or away. I think we just all need that, don't we? My name is Derek. I'm one of the church leaders here at Ebby. Now, I've got an advance notice for you. This is a date for your diaries. Sunday the 18th of July. What we want to do is have another lunchtime get together using the outdoor space up at St James Church in Loch Lees. And we'll let you know shortly about the food arrangements. But given that we will still be under some restrictions, we can have 30 as a large group outdoors together. You will need to sign up for a place. But right now, just mark that date, Sunday the 18th of July, in your diaries. Now this morning, we're going to devote some time to worshipping God together. And I know that worship ultimately is an opportunity that we have just to express our gratitude, our praise to God. But I genuinely believe that worship does us good for ourselves too. It's not just an activity that we engage with as Christians, it really is about connection and relationship with God. So of course we're going to worship God together. Stu will then be speaking to us just to talk to us about Rendezvous, our parent and toddler group. And then Steve Allen's going to talk to us, continuing our teaching series, Looking Back and Looking Forwards. And we will be sharing communion together on Zoom. And if you're able to join us by hopping into the Zoom room, then please do that. Get yourselves some bread and wine or equivalents, and it will be great to share communion together. So right now, I'm going to hand over to the Ebby worship team, who are going to lead us and help us to worship God. Good morning, everyone. We're going to use these songs to worship God together. Um, kind of the first song we're going to use is really a call to worship, and throughout the Psalms in the Bible, there's often that call to worship as God's people uh, join together to worship him. And although we're scattered, and some of us gathered even today in this building, we can use our voices, uh, we can use our bodies to worship God. So we invite you, Holy Spirit, would you lead the worship of your people? In Jesus' name. Amen. Be lifted up as we bow down. Be lifted up. Be lifted up. Be Let the nations be glad, let the whole earth tremble, for you are God. And worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, as we bow 
with a vision of Jesus. Breakthrough with a vision of Jesus. With a vision of Jesus. You are my the, the highest king would welcome me. I was lost but he brought me
generation, every people. The sun sets free. All is fading. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my father's house, there's a place. Lord, we receive the truth that you sang over us. Unlock that if that's the first time. Unlock that in us. The sun says free. Oh, it's free. I'm a child of God, yes I am. Amen. Amen. So before I hand over to uh, Steve this morning who's going to be speaking, I just want to share something with church and with our local community. Some of you will have heard this news. Um, so 35 years ago, yeah, I can't believe it's 35 years, at Rendezvous, our parent and toddler group here at Ebby started. It was set up as a place of welcome, of support to, to young families, um, both within church and in our local community. And there's been loads of great relationships built a lot of laughter, fun, a lot of tears. Um, we've seen in this room here, in the back hall, craft activities, a lot of songs sung, um, and some amazing cakes. Now, I work in the offices here, and obviously I had to quality test these cakes often. Um, we also heard those kind of famous words that rung out um, every week. Tidy up time. Um, and then that little toy spider that kind of got thrown out and the children absolutely love that but today I'm really sad to announce that we we feel um, in consultation with the team and the leadership of Rendezvous that the time for this group has come to an end and it's really sad to announce that um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute but we are really grateful to the amazing volunteers that have made Rendezvous happen over so many years. Um, you've invested huge amounts of yourself, of your time, um, into supporting young families here in our local community and within church. And I, I want to really highlight three people particularly for Rosemary, uh, for Angela and for Emma who um, over the 35 years have different points have taken a lead in um, making Rendezvous happen alongside incredible teams that they've empowered and supported um, to make this place a place of welcome, a place of hospitality, a place of showing and sharing the love of Jesus um, in, within young families' lives. And that's been awesome to see what you've done over the years. And I just wanted just to share a few quotes um, of memories that people have already sent in. We want to encourage you, if you've been um, involved in Rendezvous at any point, to share your memories. And here's just a few of them. Um, I took my son there probably in about 1994. I remember it being a lovely place. Someone else said, a great place to take my little ones in 2002 and 2006. It was great facility, support, friends, and of course, cake. Another person said this, As a grandmother, I found great happiness at Rendezvous, being able to bring my grandson, who had such a wonderful time there, at being able to mix and communicate with other children, their parents, and the Sunshine family who looked after us. I love that phrase. I will miss you all so much as will my new granddaughter, who won't get to know everything her brother had and be blessed by the love that you all had. May I also say 
that your coffee and cakes were delicious and always welcome. And finally, this other quote that just came in yesterday. After trying out a couple of groups, me and my family found Rendezvous was the place our puzzle was complete. My children loved every Tuesday and waited with anticipation. Eagerly walking in each time was such a family feeling, I also enjoyed the te- being on the team for a short time. But what a time it was, precious, priceless, and each session left me feeling uplifted. We love sharing life stuff together and are sad to join to close. Me and my family say thank you. So you can see the tension of joy and kind of some of the sadness of seeing this finish. But as a church, we want to keep being committed to our vision and the values to support young families in our church and in our community. And we want to welcome you to be part of this journey. So over the next few months, we're going to have an opportunity for conversation to see what can the next season look like. It won't look like the past, but what could the next season in our rapidly changing culture look like as we continue to support families, young families particularly? So please do pray with us on this journey. Please do share your memories, email them to Ebby office or go to the website page that will be on the link at the bottom um, and share your memories. Um, and please do encourage the team because it's been a hard decision to make but actually they've been brave in making that decision but also still got that beating heart for how do we um, share and show and speak the love of Jesus for young families in our community so let's take an opportunity to pray Father God I thank you for all those hundreds of families that have been impacted by rendezvous over the last 35 years thank you to the for the investment of those who have led for rosemary angela emma for their volunteer teams who dedicated and served in this context lord we pray for each child lord that they would come to realize the love of jesus for themselves for each mum, dad, grandparent, that they would come to know the love of Jesus. And we ask, Lord, that you would continue to rebirth a new vision going forward. Help us to see what you are doing, Lord. Lord, we ask it in your strong and powerful name. Amen. So please get in contact. Um, and help, help us shape what the journey going forward is. I'm going to hand over now to Steve, who is going to share with us this morning, um, again from the book of Haggai. Thanks. Hi, I'm Steve, and I'm one of the leaders in church. Welcome to this talk and this service. For many of us during the pandemic, it's been about survival and putting plans on hold. I've not been able to go on holidays abroad or spend much time with friends and family as I would like. But also I've not been able to serve God in the food bank as much as I would have liked to and I've not been able to organise Southmead hospital services. As hopefully, and we, we really do hope that we come out of this pandemic now, what will I do with my life? Will I continue with food bank? Or will I organise a service at Southmead Hospital? In some ways, I don't really feel like it. It's hard work serving. I've got used to not doing these things. Do I want to do them anymore? It's a good time now to be thinking, what do I want to do? Sometimes, if I'm honest, I just want to do things that I enjoy. What about you? What do you want to do with this freedom that we we hopefully is coming? We say by faith that yes, what greater and greater freedom is coming. What holidays have you planned? Will you serve God in the same ministries that you did before? Now there clearly is a time to stop doing things. To be sure, this is a good time to review our lives. Though for some of you, perhaps there is this wider freedom. You're a bit nervous. You need to take small steps as you step out of this 
uh, pandemic lockdown because you've lost some kind of confidence. And I understand that. But I think we must not let our sense of low mood stop us from serving God. Or because we're not used to doing certain things, that we don't do them anymore. We mustn't let this set the trajectory of our lives. Today we are going to look at a group of people who'd become used to not serving God, who'd become so over-focused on themselves. My point today is about focus. Over-focus on ourselves is not the way to the happiness that we all seek. Rather, my point is that focusing on God will bring life and life in abundance. To be sure, God wants us to be happy and enjoy life, but so often we have the wrong focus. It's been well proven by scientific research, for example, that if you really focus on just being happy, you won't be. It's the people who are really generous who are much happier than those that are stingy. And similarly, the Bible. Jesus said it's better to give than to receive. And, and, and the Bible says in, in Proverbs about seeking wisdom rather than happiness. And as you seek wisdom, the result is happiness and joy. And, and we're in this series, looking back, looking forward. As we begin to come out of lockdown, we need to look back and remember what God has done in our life. That he is the living God. And as we go forward, we look forward, we realise that the same God is with us and in us and can change the world and can change our world. Last week, Derek looked at the rebuilding of the Temple Foundation in Ezra chapter 3. They, but they only managed to build the foundation. Then, unfortunately, they faced opposition and the building of the temple stopped for 16 years. There are many things that we've not been able to do in this season. But now, a new season, I hope, is coming. I think it is coming upon us. And it was a new season for the people of God that we're going to talk about today. After a bit of a bloodbath, there's a new king on the throne, Darius. The year is 520 BC. And God speaks through the prophet Haggai. So let's read. Haggai chapter 1, verse 1 to 16. In the second year of King Darius, on the first day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai to Zerubbabel, son of Shetiel, governor of Judah, and Joshua, son of Josadak, the high priest. This is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say the time has not yet come to rebuild the Lord's house or, or temple. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai, is it time for you yourselves to be living in panelled houses while this house remains a ruin? Now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much but harvested little. You eat but never have enough. You drink but you never have your fill. You put clothes. You put on clothes but are not warm. You earn wages but only to put them in a purse with holes in it. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. Go up into the mountains and bring down timber and build my house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honoured, says the Lord. You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home I blew away. Why, declares the Lord Almighty, because of my house which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy with your own house. Therefore, because of you, the heavens have withheld their dew, and the earth its crops. I call for drought on the fields and on the mountains, on the grain, on the new wine, the olive oil, and everything else the ground produces, on people 
and livestock and all the labour of your hands. My main point is that focusing on God brings life. Why does that happen? Because as we focus on him, we will attract God's favour. And I've kind of got three sub points. One is God's favour. The next one is falling into holes. And number three is faith, not feelings. So let's think about God's favour. The people's focus had been there on panelled houses, usually connected with, say, royal dwellings of putting cedar panelling on the inside. They'd been doing that rather than building the temple. And life wasn't going really very well for them. Why? Well, God says, because of my house, which remains a ruin, which, while each of you is busy with your own house. And in lockdown, the sales of DIY have skyrocketed. Of course, it's not wrong to spend time and money on our houses. I remember years ago, I remember feeling guilty as we began to think about putting an extension on our current house. In fact, that's where I'm recording now. Should we give away more, the money? Don't we have enough? Isn't this like living in a panelled house when there's so much of the kingdom of God that could do with gift and generosity? Yet there's a difference between what is wanted and what is needed. Between what is practically helpful and what is luxury. The extension has given us a place to flourish and to be in a better place to be able to serve. We, we wish we'd done it earlier. In Haggai's day, there was an over-focus on their houses and their wants. Instead of serving God, there are many other good things that we can over-focus on. Family, friends, perhaps a hobby or a sport or even work. Four times in this short book, Haggai says, give careful thought to your ways. Verse 5, verse 7, and then twice in chapter 2. The trouble is we get swept along by our culture and the world in which we live, the messages of the world, and we don't spend time to consider. Verse 5 and 6 show that things were not going well for the people of that day. It's echoes of Deuteronomy 28, where God says that if they serve him, they would bless him. And if they disobeyed God, he would allow trouble into their lives. I think generally that's true, that as we follow God, he will bless us. And so that, not that we can keep it, but that we can give it away, that we can be generous. I think it's completely wrong to be specific. The reason why I'm poor, poor is because I'm a bad Christian. There are many other factors involved. I mean, for example, Haggai probably was trying to serve God and yet he was probably not having the harvest either. Sometimes it's about a corporate identity of a nation affects individuals. The context of our situation affects our situation. But I do believe that in general God wants us to flourish in life. And to have something of his resources to give away to others. We may not have material resources, but we can give love, encouragement and pray. Instead of focusing on, uh, on panelled houses, we need to have a focus on God and his work. And that, that's true of the people of Haggai's time. So verse 8 says, Go up into the mountains. Bring down timber and build my house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honoured, says the Lord. And this is where we get into the idea of favour and that God's favour comes through God focus. Did you see that? Building God's house brings God pleasure. Do you know when you do something for God, we give him pleasure. He's moved. He loves it. 
And he can't but help just give that back to us in some way. And that's where his favour comes on us. In Haggai's day, they were struggling in the verse 5 and 6. But as they began to build the house, in chapter 2, verse 19, it says, From this day on, I will bless you. I remember a preacher saying that when Paul and Barnabas were in prison in Philippi in Acts 16, they had been badly and wrongfully beaten. And yet, despite that, at midnight, they were worshipping and praising God. And God took pleasure in that worship. And he was moved by that worship. You know, maybe he was, you know, he was really moved by that. And, and after a bit, he began to tap his feet. And, got, and that tapping got stronger. And the preacher said, well, Isaiah 66 says, heaven is... God's throne and earth is his footstool. So as he began to tap his feet, there was an earthquake. <laughs> it's not a surprise, is it? And it says in Acts 16 that Paul and Barnabas were set free from prison by an earthquake. It doesn't always quite work that way, but it illustrates the point that as we worship God, he is moved and pleased by us. You see, I don't think you can outgive God. Uh, some New Testament verses, 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8, where it talks about having given money in response. Paul writes that God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. What could be more encompassing than that? And Galatians 6 says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever slows, sows to please his flesh from that flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. And that's not just a long life, that's a good quality life and in the here and now. Let's not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. I think that's a real verse for us today. You can't outgive God. One of my memory stones, the memory stones that Esther talked about, was when I, I remember telling God, or, or God telling me something that meant that I would not be able at that time to give up working full time for Rolls Royce when something of me wanted to give some time to be able to serve church more. But immediately God also said in 1 Samuel 2.30, God says, I will honour those who honour me. And it's a long story, but to cut it short, and in a context was a number of people in work said, I would never be allowed to work part time, not because necessarily I was amazing, but just because I had knowledge and experience and, 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 and I was overworked. And I remember coming to a very bizarre, strange meeting where I presented to my boss's boss that my small team needed more resource, more people. And yet in the same breath, I was saying, I'd like to work part time. But I was allowed, amazingly, to go part-time a year later. When again they could have said no as they had done previously. The same excuses were there. And now I've been working part-time for five years or so. God is good and his love endures forever. You can't outgive God. You definitely can't. So that's my first point. Favour comes through focusing on God. But sometimes, and this is my second point, it causes us to fall into holes. The first hole you might have fallen into, and be perplexed about perhaps, is that surely, how, how am I talking about God's favour? Doesn't he love everybody? Well, he does. He, he's, he has unconditional love for us all. But if we're going to experience the fullness of joy, 
if we're going to really experience a sense of being loved by God, and if we're going to experience his hope and his peace and the power of his presence in a mighty way, we will need to do what pleases him and we will need to follow his way. The second hole that we can get into our get into it comes out of that in a sense that oh I am so broken and I'm always failing that I am never going to experience God's favour. I think my answer to that one is God knows you and he is really really gracious and gives us much more than we deserve. We are his sons and his daughters. The third hole that I think people often come into, and to some degree I do, is that we never rest. We think we're never doing enough. We're always going after this. We're always feeling guilty and anxious because we're not meeting all the needs that we see. We're constantly doing this, giving, wanting to give to that, wanting to help this person, wanting to do this. And we're never happy. We're always feeling we have failed. We've not done enough. And this, out of this, you can begin to think that we're saved or loved only if you do more. And yet, as children of God, we have nothing to prove. He loves us as we are. We need to rest in his approval and his love. How great the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. Another hole that we fall into is a kind of me-centred approach. Our whole world is me-centred. And as Christians, we often are me-centred too even though we might be doing things for God. It might be that actually, deep down, the real reason is that it gives us a sense of purpose rather than because we're actually glorifying God. And God understands that to some degree, that actually he's given us things with which to do that we can serve him and it gives us a sense of purpose. But ultimately, we should be about the glory of God. So Haggai says we need to give him pleasure and Honour him. He is so, so worthy of everything. And yet so often it's all about me. Another hole that we fall into is, well, this was all about building the temple, wasn't it? So, you know, what's really important is building the church or doing spiritual things. But actually God has made the whole creation and whilst there is a mandate for the Great Commission to bring people to know Jesus, there is also a mandate, a commission to go and rule the earth and, and go out and, and look after the whole of creation and be creative and use that which is there but to glorify God. So, what's more important, that I volunteer at Food Bank or I work for Rolls-Royce? Well, the answer is... They're both the same if they are both worship. I wonder what hole do you fall into? I fall into lots, several of those. The idea that, um, you know, I'm so broken that God will never bless me. The idea of that I need to work more and more in order to find his love. The idea of being me-centred. The idea of some things being more important than others. Those are some of the holes that we fall into. Now I want to come to my third point, which is faith, not feelings. In order to do that, I want us to read again from Haggai chapter 1, and verse 12 through to 15. Then Zerubbabel, son of Shetiel, Joshua, son of... Josedach, the high priest, and the whole remnant of the people obeyed the voice of the Lord, their God, and the message of the prophet Haggai, because the Lord, their God, had sent him. And the people feared the Lord. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave this message of the Lord to the people. I am with you, declares the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of Shetiel, 
governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, son of Jozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of the whole remnant of all the people. And they began, they came and began to work on the house of the Lord Almighty, their God, on the 24th day of the sixth month. Verse 12 says that they obeyed the voice of the Lord. But what had they done? We don't really know because verse 14 makes it clear that God stirred them up and they came and began to build the temple. So what had they done before that? What was the obeying in verse 12? Well, it might be that they went up to the mountain and done something and brought some timber down, perhaps. But actually, I think, I'd like to believe at least that perhaps it is something else. You see, the word obey actually nine times out of ten is translated as listen. And it means to listen well in order to, to come to action. And that's what the message version says. The message version says they really, really listened. And for me, I think that's God. That, as the, that, that I love it that he blesses them and says, I am with you in response to them just listening well and bringing themselves as they are with their mood, their state that they're in, to him. And it was the, the stirring of the Spirit came after that. I think God takes us as we are, as we just humbly bring ourselves to him. And the response as they brought themselves, God says, I am with you. Of course, this is a common theme in the Bible. I don't think there's a major character in the Bible that God doesn't say something like that, that I am with you. And I think this is truly wonderful. And it's true for us today in the 21st century that God is with us. But I think the real challenge for me today and every day is do I do life with God? Do I have with God moments? Am I doing things for God or, or am I doing things with God? And in my daily Rolls Royce life, my daily humdrum, washing up, putting out the washing or whatever I've done today, are they with God moments? He wants to be with us, to sure. He said so. And then moving on, God is still doing things in the world it, and he isn't about to stop any time soon. Chapter 2 says his spirit remains on his people and I think that's true of every church, that he remains on us. God is with us. More than that, he is in us to change the world. We may not feel that at times, but faith says that we have the presence of God in our hearts and our lives. So we can begin to build. We can begin to do things for God. Christ in us, the hope of glory, Colossians said. So we have, we have the hope of God. We are hope carriers to the world. There is so much more we can do. Stephen Furtick writes, if the size of your vision for your life is not intimidating to you, there's a good chance it's insulting to God. It's a bit provocative, perhaps, but it's making a point. If the size of your vision for your life is not intimidating to you, there's a good chance it's insulting to God. He wants to do way more. And that doesn't really mean, oh, you've got to go and do something else the other side of the world. It means where we are. God is there. His spirit is in us. He is wanting to do more. Now is the time to step out in faith. The people of Haggai's day were sort of saying, well, you know, it's not time to build the temple. And Haggai comes along and says, now's the time. And I think now is the time to step out and follow God. My point today is that as we focus on God and we surrender and we give ourselves to him, 
He brings life and life in abundance into our life. You cannot outgive God. I wonder how does this talk land for you and I today? I think there are four responses that we each of us need to consider. The first one is are we really listening well to God and surrendering to him? He will honour that, whatever our mood, however we feel. And the second thing is to give careful thought to our ways, particularly through the summer time. Because now is the time to build the house of God, to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all things will be given to you. The third thing is, I would love you to join us and me praying that God would stir the leaders by his spirit, that he would stir everyone, the church, by his spirit. And then the fourth thing that we need to learn and grow into is to have with God moments in our everyday life. Wouldn't it be tremendous if we were stirred by the Holy Spirit that we were a people of God who just oozed the love of God, which is so wide, so high, so deep, so long that you can't get round it, as the song goes. That we were people who are filled with inexpressible joy, with a peace that passed, passes understanding, that we were hope carriers. Wouldn't it be fantastic if we were like that? So that we can build the house of God in our day. Let's pray. Father God, great God, you know that we um, often don't honour you as we should do. You know how we feel today, how we struggle to do things, maybe just survive. Lord, help us to bring our hearts to you today. And help us to say yes to you. Thank you, Lord, that where we failed, you're really good at forgiveness. That's why you went to the cross. And you want to start afresh with each one of us. Help us, Lord, stir us by your spirit that we may honour you in this day. Amen. Thank you so much, Steve, for talking to us. In fact, thank you to everyone who's been involved in today's service. Now, at the beginning, I mentioned the fact that here we are in the summer, got summer holidays approaching. And I just want to remind you about the Pop-Up Taste Cafe. We've really enjoyed doing that on a Thursday morning. We've got two more pop-up cafes over the next few weeks before the summer break. So we've got one this coming Thursday not one on the 8th of July, and then the final one on the 15th of July. So if you're free on a Thursday morning, 10 till 12, just come along to Ebby. It's outdoors, great coffee, great cake. You'd be so welcome. Bring a friend. It's so informal and it's lovely to sit out in the sun. And of course, it's going to be sunny. Anyway, we're going to join together to share communion now and we're going to do that in actuality so it's going to be on zoom so the recorded part of our service is coming to an end here check out any links that you've been sent and the website and you'll find the opportunity to join us on zoom bring your bread and your wine or equivalents with you and we're going to share communion together now, whether or not you can join us for that, I really do pray God's blessing upon you. And I do hope we get to see you again next week. May God bless you all.